Good afternoon beautiful people, back again with another Project ECK20 episode. So Mims was at the weekend and it was the maiden voyage for the uh, EF. We've noted a few problems that we had with it and the main one was that the steering wheel was shaking quite violently, I say quite violently, noticeably at speed. So at about 70, 80 mile an hour. Um, Obviously we don't do any more than 70 mile an hour because that's the speed limit. Um, the steering wheel was shaking so I assume it's the wheel weight so I'm going to whip the front wheels off and take those to a friend tomorrow to be rebalanced. Hopefully that will solve that issue but whilst the front wheels are off I want to strip down the coilovers and essentially just rebuild them. So we've got a slight knock at the front end as well at low speeds and when the car is or when the front of the car is unloaded. So I want to rule out the fact that it's not the coilovers so I'm going to strip them down, redo the preload so I'll show you how to do all of that if you don't know how to do that already. And yeah, that's about it really. Make sure everything at the front of the car is tight, obviously to, to make sure that knock's gone. Um, it's really not that noticeable. You only notice it when you're going over small bumps in the road at between, I'd say, 5 and 15 miles an hour. So not the end of the world. I'm sure it's none of the bushes or anything like that. But I know I've never set the preload on the coilovers. So I'm going to do that now. Um, I'll pop the camera down so you can see everything that I'm doing. Another thing that I'm looking forward to trying out is our new bonnet prop, telescopic. Uh, I've had the bonnet fall on my head a couple of times now, so this is long overdue. So because we took our old one out, this is hopefully going to sit on the intake manifold or somewhere down on the gearbox and we can hold up the bonnet. So um, yeah, let's get going with that. You guys remember literally just how sunny it was. It's just started raining. How is that even possible? I was going to record me jacking the car up and do a nice little uh, little montage of those uh, few clips there, but I can't put the camera outside if it's been with rain. So um, yeah, go England. I'm going to. Um, Whip the wheels off now, uh, take the coilovers out and then start stripping those down and hopefully, because I can do that inside, I can film all of it. Copper slip is the one. Every time you touch any of these suspension bolts, make sure you copper slip them because, well, you saw how easy that came out. Also, copper slipped inside the suspension fork, comes off of there real easy. So there you have it, the coilovers are off and I've got everything laid out that you need to strip them down and to clean them up essentially. So, well everything that I use anyway, I mean this isn't a definitive guide, it's just what I do to tidy up the coilovers. We installed them in a bit of a hurry so we never had a chance to copper slip them in the first instance. So we're just getting around to that now. So I have already gone ahead and loosened up these locking collars here. So they're all loose. Um, the 61 coilovers use a design where they use an Allen key to hold this top uh, spring perch in place. And that basically just means that you don't have uh, three locking collars here, you've only got the two. So you loosen that Allen key, wind that all the way down and your spring falls out. But what I, the main thing I wanted to check was the reason for taking them out is that the preload on the springs is correct. So I um, know how to do this on the sort of dual or triple perch system, but I assume it's the same on this. So I'm just going to give that a go and see what happens. So yeah, um, I've got some copper slip, some WD-40 to clean them up. And obviously I'm going to need more than one rag, but that's just one. I lost the 
coilover key for these coilovers unfortunately so I'm having to use some that I had lying around from an old set of Meister R's but again um, they've pretty generic size the uh, sort of perches so these will fit no problem at all I know that because I've already done the rears so yeah let's crack on and uh, sort of split them down so like I said before I've started by loosening this collar here um, and then what I'll do is I'll wind the bottom cup the entire way down so for anyone interested these coilovers were actually on their lowest setting when they were on the car so that will give you an idea of what your car will look like um, if you go for the 621 coilovers so we'll wind this all the way down and that comes off so there you go you've got your bottom cup and um, yeah it's pretty generic because it's got a brake line fitting on there as well so um, we'll put that to one side for the time being and again we'll wind this all the way down to the bottom so there's your second uh, item that has come off the coilovers so we've got a bit of surface rust here obviously some water's got in uh, under there so we'll clean all that off in a moment but um, yeah, as you can see, it's a chamfered design, so you've not got as much contact area on here. So I guess in theory, the idea is that it loosens a lot easier. Um, so yeah, again, put those to one side. And now it is time to loosen this Allen key. So that is one thing that I forgot to mention you'd need. So let me grab that. Luckily, I'm into my bike, so I managed to find uh, a multi-tool. So um, go ahead and loosen this collar off here there you go so that looks like that again pop that to one side and now we can go ahead and loosen the top perch so normally you should just be able to loosen this by hand wind this all the way down so as you can see here this is all the build up in the threads of the coilover so if you see any of that grab a rag wipe it off and continue on down it'll just make your life a bit easier so we've got a bit of a stiff spot on here i'd imagine there's some sort of road grime stuck in amongst it but that's the whole reason we're taking them apart well one of the reasons anyway so there we go at the end of the thread now and that will fall off so you've got two pieces here but it'll probably come off as one so you've got the rubber um spring seat on top of your uh preload perch there so as you can see that's where the uh allen key came out of so again we'll pop our four components to the side so again we've got the bottom cup the lower ring the upper ring and the screw for the upper ring so now that we've got that off we can lift the shock up hold it by the top pull the spring completely off and pop that to the side and now here you can see that we've got a lot of road grime on there so obviously on here as well is a representation of how dirty these things get so it's good to take them off once in a while and keep them maintained so I am going to um, give us a good spray in of WD-40 on here to clean out all the threads all the way up on the boot as well yeah get to work on it there we go you may have to go over individual threads with your nail over a, or your nail inside of a microfiber like I am or a rag or whatever it is you're using but there you go that looks a lot better a lot cleaner now so you can see it's all just surface dirt there's no there's no rust on the body or anything like that if you're really anal you could probably get in between all of these cracks and clean them out um, that's it I mean install is the reverse of that I'm gonna go ahead and clean all of these bits up um, and then you will rejoin when I'm putting it back together and setting the preload so take the spring um, I believe you can put it in any orientation but I always put it with the writing facing the right way so we'll slip that over make sure you still retained your rubber bush up the top here doesn't usually come off with the spring but it's worth checking turn it on end and then it's just a case of 
winding this back down. You'll have to hold the shock as well somewhere through the spring just to prevent it turning. I don't know whether the camera will pick it up or not but you can see the copper slips move the entire way along the body of the shock which is great. And now to set the preload what I usually do is make sure that your spring seated correctly so you've got no weird gaps around the top or the bottom and then wind this in while you're still holding the shock with the other hand to prevent this bit moving wind this in until it's finger tight so not too much just until it starts hurting your finger really and that's about finger tight and then what you're going to do is you're going to wind this cup all the way until it meets this one so um, let's fast forward until I've copper slipped this and put this one back on right so now you've got this lower collar buttered up against the top collar now is the hard part so this is much easier with two people but I'm sure we can cope as we are what you want to do now is hold this collar so it remains in the same place on the body of the shock while you then increase the tension on the spring by tightening this top collar so essentially what we're going to do is hold this whole thing in place so I'm going to have to reapply some of this um, copper slip because this is the only way I can do it on my own but hold this whilst holding this top collar as you can see I'm holding that in place and then we're going to tighten the entire thing down and we're going to tighten that just until we can just fit the coilover spanner in there so that's that done that's the preload set on the spring you can't move the spring about at all which is great which is what we were looking for so now what we can do is get this copper slip off because it gets absolutely everywhere and then we can reinstall our um, our locking bolt so We'll pop some copper slip on that, chuck it in the hole, and then tighten this bad boy back down. So you don't need a ton of pressure to um, to keep this in place. It literally is just so it prevents it rattling down the body over our uh, over our harsh road. So I'll put a couple of turns on that. lock it down with not too much force like I say get rid of all this copper slip that's squeezed out of the hole and then again we're ready to install our uh, lower mount so again I'm going to go ahead copper slip all this up put some more copper slip on these threads and then um, yeah wind it back to where it was so like I say it was at its lowest setting so I'm going to go ahead wind this all the way back in lock the collar off and then I'll give you a comparison between cleaned up and the one that has uh, been yet to be done so yeah let's go ahead and copper slip this up and get it back on I noticed as well that when I took this off there was some surface rust around the top here and I assume that's just from water running down the body of the shock and actually accumulating on the top of this um, this sort of surface here so I'm gonna pay real attention to making sure we've got a nice ring of that around there I mean yeah it looks kind of messy but in my opinion you can never use enough copper slip I also did it on the bottom of this ring here just for good measure wind this back on again I think we're going to the bottom here there we go so that's at the bottom and then what we can do is wind this locking ring back down until it meets our lower ring and then using these on this way and this way lock that down not with too much force you don't need a mad amount of force and then um, yeah that is a properly adjusted 621 coilover so here's another side by side of cleaned and preloaded and not cleaned and not preloaded so um, as you can see on this one here if the camera ever decides to focus you've got some real like dirt from the roads on there a bit of surface rust up there um, 
and yeah on this one completely clean copper slipped springs all clean and yeah so again just really good practice to do once in a while on your coilovers if you haven't done yours for a while then uh, I'd urge you to go out and check them and, and just sort of take them apart it's really easy I mean to be honest I didn't know how I was doing this before I did it the first time took them all apart put them all back together and uh, just gives you peace of mind really so if you're anal like me really good thing to do if not maybe leave your coilovers on have someone else do it um, but sort of don't leave them rotting away on your car so I'll crack on with this one and then we'll resume after that so there we have it guys both coilovers with the preload set and completely rebuilt and, and re-greased so they will be ready to go back on the car tomorrow it's currently dark um, it looks a lot darker in real person than it does on the camera that's for sure but it's taken me a couple of hours to get that done uh, not the end of the world and not at all the hardest job by any stretch of the imagination so definitely worth doing if you haven't done your coilovers in a while go and check them out make sure they're all good take them off the car if you've got a spare couple of hours I am going to call it a night it's now dark and everything's done so um, we'll pick up tomorrow when we go and get the wheels rebalanced tomorrow at a friend's workshop so um, stay tuned and we'll see you again then What's up guys, it's the next day. I've had all the wheels balanced and they're uh, all ready to go back on the car. So for anyone wondering, this is exactly why I bought this car. You can get four 15 inch wheels in there with room to play, so you can probably get six in there really. Um, I'm just round visiting my mate Curtis with his uh, VX220. He's just changed all the these wanky coilovers out for uh, Bill Steins, is it? So um, yeah, we were having a bit of a problem with that, but it's all done, all back on, and uh, yeah, it's a cool little car. Well, that's the first time I've ever told him it was a cool little car, but we've uh, we've been out of Kurt in the uh, in the Civic, and it's it's roughly the same, isn't it? Yeah. And this is a turbo VX220, so it's about. Same power, about 200? 200 brake, yeah. So it's about the same power as ours, so ours must weigh a similar amount to this, maybe slightly less. I think ours had the edge just a little bit. But yeah, that's cool to know that ours is as fast as a VX220 turbo. At the moment. At the moment, he's just put a new turbo into cooler, other bits and pieces on his, so he's just waiting to get it mapped. And then he reckons it's gonna be about 260, 70? My idea. 270, let's say. So then we need to up our game, get ours remapped as well. But yeah, just wanted to show you that we're here and that the tires are all, well, all the wheels are all balanced up. So um, yeah, let's cut back to uh, home and pop in those back on. Back home now guys, just getting ready to pop the suspension back on and I just need to go and grab the wheels from the Accord as well so I'll grab them and then start cracking on, I want to check the oil, do a quick bolt check of the front end as well just to make sure nothing's loose and then I think we should be good for chap fest so I'm going to be washing it in the next couple of days, we're doing a vlog tomorrow with everyone prepping their cars for chap fest so I'm sure you'll see that shortly after this video so yeah let's crack on. Right, so that's one of the shocks back in. Looks a hundred times better than before, as you can see. It's all clean, copper slipped, and obviously the preload's all set on there as well. So that looks great. I want to paint the bells of the discs at some point, but we potentially may be upgrading to 282s on the front because these are just 262s. Um, so if we are doing that, then I won't bother doing these and I'll just do the new discs. So what I'm gonna do, in case anyone's wondering, we're running a 15mm hub-centric spacer up front, so um, I'll whack that on, like so, and then the wheel's ready to go back on this side. So, oh, what I will show you as well is having a cage means that you can jack the car up. just from three of the uh, 
three of the jacking points, which isn't great. Obviously, the, my floor on my driveway is not flat, <laughs> completely level. So, um, yeah, I've just got this sort of supporting it in here, taking some of the weight because the jack stand doesn't quite get in there. So, yeah, I'll whack all the wheels back on. I'm going to fix this at some point this weekend as well. Obviously, Dan's uh, mishap from last weekend. But, um, yeah, let's crack on with it. So the wheel's back on, so I'm just going to drop it down, um, check a few things in the engine bay, and then we're good to go. Levitate, 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 levitate. So there we have it guys, the car is back down on the wheels, and the coilovers are preloaded, copper slipped up and um, I've checked all of the front end for loose bolts and everything like that as well. Didn't find any, um, so I assume it was down to the preload on the coilovers, but um, yeah, we'll pick up tomorrow when we are preparing for Japfest. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you don't already, and we'll see you next time.